What up, though? All right. We're getting Yo. at it. All right. So we got a new script that we're reading for everybody today. Something we've been working really hard on. Um, this is for a new NBC TV show that um, it's a drama. It's really cerebral. And um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. We've got a lot invested in this, too. Like, this is going to be our big break, I would say, for all five of us. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be equally all of our big break who equally deserve it. I am just really humbled at the break I will finally get, personally. It's about time you got a break, Felix. Yeah. My life's been a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Every day's a fucking nightmare. I just want a fucking break. Just All right. fucking one, and then perfect for the rest of my life. That's what's up. Yeah, let's do it. We're joined by Felix and Taylor of Bobby Games. Hello. Who's going to be helping us, uh, helped us write it. We all wrote this, and we're really, really hoping this will be like like a really yeah. big thing for us. We put if a lot of work into this. Yeah, if you're Ken Olin, the producer of This Is Us, and you're watching, what up, though? If did it- if you people in chat laugh, you're fucking pain. Yeah, no, this, this is, I know. Is, I know that a lot of stuff. Fullness. A lot of stuff yeah, we've been doing. Not everything has to be a fucking joke. This isn't really for E1 fans. This is for the mainstream. Like this is what's going to break us big with millions of people and make us a household name. Yeah, and we this got is for you know Pete Yard sign people. This is important. We we really got to you know have a big break so we can raise some money. For Charles to get a less hot computer. Yeah, it's true. My computer sounds like uh, like an airplane's lift, lifting off or something. Charles is such a jet setter with that computer of his. Charles All right, so needs liquid I'm just cooling. I'm holding down push to talk so people can hear it. You know. <laughs> Let's get to it. All right. So the name of this TV show is called "This Is Me, Coma Town." It's a story about the drama, about the struggle, about the intricate ways we live, laugh, and love as the power of friendship presides over our day-to-day living. Basically, it's kind of like TV for people who cry at commercials. So, let's get into some of the characters. Uh, Andrew, who will you be playing? Uh, I'm going to be playing... We'll we'll all be playing multiple characters, but my main ones will be Woost Crease, Thunder Matt, and Sharon Bartender. All right. I will be playing uh, Pussy Wallace. James Creaser and Kayla. I will be uh, the kid, the meteor, and Jeff Creaser. I will be Officer Coma and Ooster Meast. Uh, I will be Goopter Dearly, Doctor Woman, and Bodybuilder. You're going to get to know and love these characters over the next hour, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we need to spend too much time explaining them because you're really going to get to meet. Them. All right, a lot of these, okay, we start off with the classic, even though it's the very first episode, just so people can get caught up to, like, the lore. Last time on This Is Me, Coma Town. Uh, I'll do the female voice. Who wants to do the male voice for this? I think Felix uh, I can do it. I have, I have a lot of experience with NBC right. dramas. Um, oh, yeah, no, I wrote this. Uh, this is really good. <laughs> this is very good. Okay, I'm ready when you are. I wanted to be your Jim. Uh, I thought I was Jim and you were Pam. Uh, awkward. Yeah. But hey, I'm going to be in a coma for the next year. I'll always love you. Huntley, no! And I then know. smash cut. Uh, Andrew, why don't you handle the next one? Yeah. Alcoholic. Yeah, then you read the line. You don't just read the name. <laughs> Oh, yeah. My sponsor, he told me that I could handle anything. And then he went and married my wife. Smash cut. Uh, the second one will have to be done by Felix. Yeah, no, I'm, I'll do I the first I, one. Yeah, Male I, voice. Yeah I, wrote, yeah, I wrote this one. Male voice. You're telling me I have to forgive my father for being in a coma my entire childhood? The hell with you, man. Uh, Tyler, come on. <laughs> Wait, can you tell us who that character was who said that, though? It's Felix wrote this part. <laughs> I was just, like, going from ambient memories of NBC shows I've seen. <laughs> Watch, taking a bunch of ambient and watching NBC shows. Yeah. R slash ambient, let's go. Let's go. 
All right, Taylor, you want to be Mr. TV? I will be Mr. TV. Oh, my God. Robin Williams movies. They've been removed from Netflix. <laughs> Smash cut. Uh, I'll be the uh, the man with the Walkman on. I'll be his loving wife. Dizzy up. The girl still holds after all these years. I've got my tickets to see the Goo Goo Dolls this summer. I'm sorry, dear. The Goo Goo Dolls, they're not coming to our town. They've canceled. But, but why? They said they don't like it here. They don't want to come. Astrophysicist to wife. They won't believe me, but it's coming. They're unprepared. Crazy old coot. It's a meteor, damn it. A meteor. I tell you, it's going to wreck the whole town. And it wears sunglasses and says cheeky phrases. Uh, boy, I didn't listen. I, I, listen, I didn't ask for these cornrows. If you fall asleep on the beach in Barbados, you just wake up with them. But just because I have cornrows doesn't mean that I deserve that, that horse kick my ass. You were a magic user, correct? Uh, I'm the wizard, and I say that's right. I'm sorry, but you'll never use magic again. All right, I think so that about catches people up. Yeah, now no, we're on yeah, like you, you get you get what this show's about. They're caught up to the pilot now. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I am James Creaser. The next scene is where it kicks off after the um, very emotional "This is me" kind of you know intro starts, where everyone's really looking at each other longingly. It's a lot of blues and yellows and uh, a warm yeah. like feeling of just like family, but like oh, there's this tension. There's about forty yeah. different characters you see. Yeah, there's so many characters. The song is kind of like uh, a pharmaceutical commercial post rock song. All right, so we begin the first scene where Jeff Creaser is driving his car and he smashes it into another car in the back of his. Or he smashes his car Wait. into the back of it. Another what were, car. What were we trying to say when we wrote this? That he reversed into a different car? I don't know, but somehow two cars seem to have gotten into an accident, okay? And Jeff says, really edited oh. this. Jeff says, oh, fuck. Shit ass. I better get this guy's insurance. Wait, are you Jeff? You're James. I'm Jeff. Oh, okay. I thought I was. All right. Okay. Now we're on track. We're on track. Okay. Okay. All right, start over, Charles. Yeah, start over. I'll okay, I'm Jeff. That. I just got in the car accident. Oh, fuck. Shit ass. I better get this guy's insurance. You shit ass. Why'd you hit my car? This town is still healing from the big meteor. And now this? Deal with it, brother. I'm in mourning. My pregnant border collie just had an abortion. And my daughter just had a reverse abortion and a triple bypass. So yeah, maybe I wasn't keeping my eyes on the road. Well, I'm going through some things, too. Yeah, I just got nominated for my first Prime Time Emmy. But my daughter, whose name is Emmy, just got killed by a pit bull named Prime Time. So, yeah, I can't even enjoy the greatest moment of my life. And my butt stinks. And yeah, guess what? I may have won a Teen Choice Award, but my teen didn't have any choice when she got killed by that pit bull. So, yeah, I'm going through some things. The police officer then shows up. And the song Coldplay Fix You starts playing. Coldplay Fix You. Just, just say Coldplay Fix You. That's all it's Coldplay up. Fix Everyone you. knows what it means. So this is Officer Dandel Coma who shows up. What's going on here? Wait. Jeff. Jeff Creaser. My best friend. My very best friend in the world. Jeff Creaser. Talk about bad luck. You just got into a car accident. Right after the big meteor, you know. The one that devastated our small town. Our small town of New York City. And our borough, Coma Town, in which we live in. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, did, did you say Creaser? Your last name is Creaser. Yeah, I'm Jeff Creaser. I've always had a chip on my shoulder ever since my dad chased that bee into the grain silo and poisoned all the grain and ruined our family name. What's it to you? You got a problem? Yeah, well, my dad chased a bee into the grain silo and poised, poisoned all of the grain and ruined our family name. But it couldn't be the same dad, because my long-lost brother is nowhere to be found. Oh, yeah? That's a fucked-ass story. Because my long-lost brother disappeared after that heroin dealer opened a Walmart and destroyed all the local businesses. 
so let me get this straight. You guys both have the last name Creaser, and you are both somewhat unaware that you have long lost brothers, and you both have a dad that is infamous for the town for chasing a bee into a grain silo that in turn poisoned all the grain. Man, don't pull a fast one here. This town's full of bee chasers. What the fuck are you on about? What? Huh? Okay. I'm chilling. You good, Jeff? Because I'm good. Straight up, I'm good. I'm just chilling. <laughs> oh my god. Only my long-lost brother would have that kind of cavalier attitude in the face of this disaster. Well, so we gotta do something about these cars. You guys smashed them up, and they look like total shit. Reminder, we have been talking about family stuff for so long that you might have forgot that a meteor just messed up the town super bad. It looks like total shit, and we can't have you two guys sitting around lo looking like total shit. <laughs> Someone might take a picture or something for the paper, and we'll all look like a bunch of shit heads. We're living here. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. Since we've been standing here, another old lady just crashed into both of our cars and just walked off because she saw us just talking so he. Oh, and by the way, it's super obvious that you guys are each other's long lost brothers. I'm just saying. It's honestly kind of bejited, and it reminds me of a time I had a parent trap kind of case one time. I reunited two lovers in the comedy of remarriage of soul. James? Is that you? Jeff? Jeff and James embraced for 25 solid minutes in front of Officer Coma. Then, Jeff and James both go into a coma because of how passionate and sturdy the hug was. First the meteor. Now this. The work of a police officer is never over. It's such a thin blue line. By the way, the meteor I'm talking about is the one that hit our town. Now I'm the meteor here, and I say, Don't forget about me, fellas! And I pull down my sunglasses to wink at the camera. I want yeah, all, that's, all of, Everyone I needs to know. If we had to guess who wrote that, audience who do you think it would be that insinuated on having a talk he insisted he just insisted that it's in there but think about it the officer is saying by the way the meteor dead he's talking about the meteor and it's funny you just the say like, like don't forget just, about me fella and then you like instead of just saying by the way i'm the no in this part i'm the meteor and i'm talking and See, then he like says, we, we wanted says to, to do like line, who, he says in the line who he is Oh, and the, Charles... meteor's, the meteor's humping a dog. Or... <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the thing here, right? We didn't this have anything. TV. We didn't have anything that could be an action figure. So we had to, like, scrap up. Like, nobody wants to have an action figure of, like, Long Lupin Brothers. So we have to have something that'll be, like, a Funko Pop. That'll be, like, an icon for the show. And we came up with, like, a meteor. And I didn't want it to talk, but. But Charles kind of just wrote it in. I think it just makes sleeping. more sense if it talks, so it's easier to find out what it's thinking, you know? I mean, I guess, yeah, but all right. So after the meteor says, don't forget about me, fellas, old play. F all right, scene two. We're inside of a bar. Officer Coma sits at Lucky's Fold, and Sharon Bartender tends the bar. The only other person sitting at the bar is a regular named Pussy Wallace. This is to, to the bartender. So I hear they call this place Luckies. Well, they should have called it Unluckies. Because that's just my luck. Un yeah, they call this place Luckies. Funny story, though. The owner's name isn't Lucky at all. It's Tom. Tom Lucky. If his name was the other way around, maybe his life would have turned out better. I don't know nothing about that, though. Uh, Officer Coma and the bartender lock eyes, but Pussy Wallace interrupts. 
Should we be surprised? Goddamn kids day. Go on the internet and have what have you. It all messed up on double whippets and brain breezers, doodads. It's not like anything I've seen before. Not in my day. Used to take girls to drive in fees and trick them into taking off their shirts. We'd make them cold. It was, it was what was a-okay. Yeah. Those days sure were okay with me. Cut a little hole into the popcorn. Worst you would get is a slap in the and back in the day, that was action you could brag to your boys about. <laughs> yeah, those days were nice. You used to be able to wear a tight pair of corduroys and ride the bus. And if it was a bumpy route, you would feel like a woman was in your lap. And whatever happened would happen. <laughs> you would. Well, nowadays, the kids call it bu- I heard that on the radio. It's disgusting to say it. We just did that stuff back then. Hey, pussy. I wish that meteor... The one that messed up the town pretty bad. I wish I'd have hit your damn tongue, because you're talking so much. Yowza! He burnt you like that dang media burned up that grain silo. You know, the one that filled with poison? Poison grain? Because of the bee? Sometimes I wish that that meteor had never hit this town. What? Everyone wishes that. All the time. What a dumb thing to say. I guess I'll go just die. Maybe I'll go find a car to go crawl under. I'll put my head right by somebody's tire. And I will just wait for them to get into it and drive away and crush us my useless fat head. It'll pop like a zit on a watermelon. I know that doesn't work as a line, but I want you to think about it more metaphorically. Fuck. Holy fucking shit. Holy fucking shit. I need to die. I absolutely need to die right fucking now. Give me whatever you use to cut lines, Sharon. I need to shove it in my fucking brain. Kill me. Kill me. You know, back in my day, when a fella threatened to kill himself, the whole town got involved. They got a bundle of ropes and did them up mummy style until the morning where the mayor could get involved. Nowadays, I threaten to kill myself every single fucking night, and I can't even get people to make eye contact with my beady little black eyes. Yeah, that's right. I know they're beady. I know they're little. And I've heard everyone say that I got eyes like a little crab. But you know what? I'm not even mad. I'm just happy someone is talking about me when they insult me. Anyone, I love the attention. Things haven't been going so well at home. The meteor wiped out my whole block, every single house, but mine. What a load of garbage. My dirty house filled with old sports trophies from 40 years ago and yellow jock straps that didn't start out that way. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. I wear jock straps as underwear. <sighs> old pussy does like to ramble and could you all have been fitter about, does it? Well, Miss Bartender, it's getting awfully late. Don't know if I can cajole you into <laughs> maybe uh, a nightcap. Say, on my place. I know the sign says that in this bar t- up until 2 a.m., but what if we shut it down right now at 7.25 p.m. and head back to my place for a uh, nightcap? <laughs> Sharon Bartender locks the front door of the bar as Pussy Wallace, still inside the bar, settles into his Murphy chair and rambles to himself. Shy, <laughs> shy, shy, stop. To mention what a Murphy chair is? Yeah, uh, maybe people are familiar with a Murphy cool. bed. Yeah, yeah, but they don't. probably haven't seen the Murphy chair. You know what? Pussy Wallace is going to clear it all up in his, his next rant. Well, there go those two crazy kids to have sex. Better, better settle into my Murphy chair to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Old Pussy Wallace sleeps in a chair. I sleep in a chair in the only bar in town instead of my house. I don't know who this Murphy is, but he sure had some good ideas. I remember when I was like those two. Well, not like them. But I used to be having sex at one point in my life. Yeah, sex was great. I used to do it all the ways. By the way, just in case anyone's listening, this place is called Coma Town because everyone in town keeps having comas. Anyway, back to the sex I used to have. I used to do it all the ways. Front. Back, reverse, sideways, if I could figure it out. I had to have the lights on if it was sideways or have someone else in there to help or, you know, somebody would get their eye poked out. Anyways, back to the Murphy stuff. I also have a Murphy toilet. It's a toilet that folds out of the wall and I use it like a bathroom because that's what it is. When I'm done, I drain all the water out on the floor of my bathroom. Don't worry, because there's a small drain on the floor of my bathroom for all the toilet water that I dump on the floor. And then I put my Murphy toilet back into my wall. 
And then we see the meteor up above Pussy Wallace, and it says, well, it sounds like you have a Murphy brain. And then when the meteor say- lights a cigar, a medium-bodied Cuban cigar, it says. So when you say, like, when you wrote that in, right, and the, and the meteor comes How in. How do you know come- I wrote that line? Does he come in through the, the front door? Did any of the other guys write that line? Felix think, Taylor? Uh, uh, I don't think you, you I did never, it. I know you did uh, it. So. I've never heard of that line in my life. No. Okay, so oh, maybe... By the, way, by the way, sorry. Uh, should I do Denzel? Because Denzel is a guest and I wrote those lines. Yeah, you're yeah, de- yeah. You're Denzel. Yeah, we decided Definitely. that. We'll just write all the ones we wrote. All right, cool. All right, so then Pussy Wallace says, Get the fuck out of here, Meteor. I'm trying to sleep in my wall chair. Then we go to the next scene. It's morning. We're inside Officer Coma's apartment. Uh, Officer Dandel Coma rolls over, awake in a sunbathed bed, to see the beautiful woman naked, a beautiful woman's naked body next to him, who wakes up with a smile and moans at him. Uh, It's Sharon Sharon Bartender. Good morning. How long have you been awake? I don't know. About nine hours. Just watching you. <laughs> <laughs> you kept me up late enough. I had to get some sleep. Then she moves in to kiss his stubbled face. Mm. <laughs> hey, hey, guess who wrote that line? <laughs> that was me. That was actually mine. Oh, really? Mm. Okay. Yes. I wrote most uh, of the scene. Ah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Officer, Officer Coma gets out of bed, still naked, and looks out the window. Holstered firearm still on his way. I think I know what it is. Is it the comas again? <sighs> it's just so hard to sleep. With all these comas happening. It's in my name, and I can't even fix them. I'm not even in a coma. Why me? Why am I immune? What does a badge mean to a cone? Hey! Hey! You are not on your own. <laughs> I just turned into Low Screw. <laughs> that, what was that? I said I'm turning into Lois Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Peter! Peter! Sorry. You can't go into a coma! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> hey! Hey, you! You're not on your own. You're not the reason this is happening. Ever since the big storm, it's been weird here. You know that. Now come back to bed. I'm only... <sighs> I just wish they were still here. I just... I wish they could wake... Hey! Look at me. No, really, look at me. It's not your fault that all these long-lost twins hugged each other so hard that they put each other into matching comas. It's not your fault. This badge. (laughs) This badge. This badge. The one I hold dear (laughs) and honor with all my valor. The badge my father passed down to me after he was on the force. This badge has been in our family for generations. And the Coma family never let a damn Coma get in the way of justice. Coldplay Fix You starts playing, and then Sharon Bartender interrupts. Hey, come back to bed, Dandel. I may be the sexiest humble bartender of all time, but I know a thing or two. I can see it in your eyes. Maybe if we fuck, 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 fuck from dawn till dusk in your bed, then you'll feel okay. Uh, that's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now right. now we go to uh, Pussy Wallace as he's having a dream sequence <laughs> slash premonition about Officer Co- Pussy Wallace is asleep. He has the thinnest bit blanket you've ever seen <laughs> in your life. Covering barely two-thirds of his body as he sleeps in a Murphy chair like it is a bed. By the way, a Murphy chair is like a Murphy bed, but for a chair. There's also a Murphy toilet, but we're not going to get into that right now. (laughs) Also, Pussy Wallace only wears his underwear when he is sleeping, which, by the way, is a jock strap, (laughs) and it's not clean. Pussy Wallace is tossing and turning in his sleep. He is having a nightmare. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm having a dream right now. It's awful. It's more 
of a nightmare and less of a dream, to be quite honest. The clouds are weird and swirling and everything looks like total dog shit. It's in black and light, white, like how it is in old movies. I see everything in black and white. It's like, it feels like foreshadowing and I don't like it. Ugh, no, this blanket I'm sleeping under is so thin. It's basically a napkin, a paper towel. I feel pain. Ah, what do I see? Oh, oh my God. It's Officer Coma. He's at the meteor crash site. He's brooding and pensive. It's terrible. He looks even more handsome than usual. He is staring at the horizon. He looks like Stout Cortez. He appears to be having a moment of awesome self-introspection. And oh my God, he's distracted. Like most cops do, deep in their thoughts, he has unholstered his gun and placed it upon the grass. And the grass is wet with dew. A nearby child, playing with an iconic child toy of a bright red ball, has spotted the gun. He's reaching. Oh, God, no. The kid's going to grab the gun. He has. <gasps> I'm awake. A child will grab and eat Officer Coma's gun at 10, 11 a.m. this morning after he has wrapped up his lovemaking, slept it off, and headed to his favorite introspection spot to think about yesterday's coitus. He's going to absentmindedly place his firearm on the ground as he thinks about the coitus and a nearby child playing with a red ball will watch the morning light dance off the handgun and instinctively eat the handgun whole, even though the safety is off and a bullet is chambered. This will happen exactly 10-11. Oh, 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 man. Oh, man. Oh, glad that's out of my system. Time to get back to sleep and sleep in my wonderful Murphy chair that folds right into the wall. Okay, now we cut to an external scene. We're in an ethereal field on the outskirts of Comatown. We see Denzel Lightman, Roland Best Western, Colin O'Brother, Diesel Warblazer, Kimber Sluts, Hank Guster, BB De La Rocha, and Tank Spitz, <laughs> all standing amid the blossoms of various flowers in the field. Denzel Lightman. These fields used to be beautiful, like a woman saw a foot. They used to spring up with wildflowers of colors of all kind. There was no meteor. There were no comas. If there was just some, some time of peace in this place, maybe the flowers would return. That isn't going to happen. Because the military have decided to build a base here. It'll be here two days and this land will be finished. The Irish railroad workers I come from didn't build a line through this country to be destroyed by militarism. We have to stop them. We have to make a bomb. Uh, I guess I'll do Roland Best Western. Yeah. Has it come to that? Do we need to nuclearize this entire town we were born into? Grew up in? Loved in? Screwed in? All because of few Beetle Baileys playing G.I. Joe and Transformers? Comas won't go away with a bomb. They will never wake up. Ever. Look, Denzel. You shine. You're like an engagement ring. You're like a crystal gem. You're as sharp as that jawline of yours. You're the star quarterback of a state champion team. You were the guy. I know your mom going into that coma changed everything. But I mean, I mean, my God. You've been constipated for three months. You're always keeled over with pain and you refuse to let anyone help. Just say, I'll go when she's up. That's not okay. It's not. <laughs> if you care about these people, if you care about this town, You'll go in tomorrow, and you'll say you need to go. You'll ask for help. And if you don't, I'll make you. Real quick. So he has to go into town to go to the bathroom? Yeah, yes. so... Yeah, he won't. You can only... So, uh, as the NBC expert, I'm deciding now, the only place you can take a shit in the, in the like, county is inside Coma Town, exactly. And that's one of the B, B, B conflicts. Oh, uh, okay. With Denzel's character. But he won't go to the bathroom until his mom... No, until his mom up. wakes up. He's oh, okay. going to have that turd in him until okay. his mom's up. And that's the season two arc. Yeah, that's the season two arc. Uh, did you write Colin O'Brother? Me? No. 
I did. Okay. Uh, Taylor, you want to do that one? Uh, sure. Let's do it. You ass. You absolute dumbass. Denzel. Man, you're so kitted out. You have everything every guy wants. But man, this coma's gotten into your head. But look, it's messing with all of us. It's doing to us exactly what it wants. Coma's always done this. You can throw a football like Golden Sonic, but you can't even stomach your mom getting in a deep coma. You have to get together, man. Because Roll Tide's coming and they want you. <laughs> You're losing focus, brother. This coma has to put everyone to sleep like a coma, but we want you to wake up. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, wait, Roll Tide is coming? Uh, is that. Yeah, a... they, they want to recruit Denzel for. Football. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what I was thinking when I wrote it. <laughs> All right, sorry that every it? sorry everything that we wrote doesn't I'm, have a shit of exposition. I thought that was enough. That roll tide is coming, and they yeah, want this, you. You have to be smart to, to get this show. You got to pay attention. Shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm fucking. Charles up. is the one. It's like, and then we see the meteor twinkling above like a star, even though it hit yeah, the town. That's smart. You haven't seen that in a show before ever, probably. Okay, it's, Russian, it's smart. That is. Okay, so I'm next. Scary. I'm Diesel Warblazer. Yeah. I was thinking you wrote that one. Okay, look, I'm saying, okay, now imagine I'm Diesel Warblazer. Look, okay. Denzel, Roland, Colin, you guys are my brothers. The bond we share together has never been stronger since we pulled those Iranian children out of that raft that they sailed all the way from Iran to the American shore just to taste a little nip of freedom for the first time in their miserable and un-American lives. We saved them. But now I know things are getting more different and difficult. Look. When all of Robin Williams' movies were taken off of Netflix in our town, I didn't think we were going to make it. But we did. And look, I know your child was stillborn, Roland. I know, Denzel, you feel like your butt is getting too big from all the food you eat that goes to your big butt and you're constipated. And Colin, I know when the Goo Goo Dolls canceled their show in town because they didn't want to come, it broke your heart. <laughs> And you went onto your bed and pouted and pouted and kicked your feet because you wanted to meet Johnny Rezesnik. But we're going to make it better. We must. And we have to. And God damn it, we will. All right, I'll do this one. All right, this is Kimber Slutz. Uh, listen, Denzel, I may be the village bicycle in the way that everyone has taken a ride, but you're out of your mind if you think we're all going to sit here and let you do this to yourself. Yeah, well, the military is going to be here in two days to build a new base. So what? Your mother is in a coma, and I'm sorry, but building a nuclear bomb in two days in order to bomb the military base that is coming in two days isn't going to bring her back. It isn't going to bring the flowers back. It's not going to make the meteor go away and stop making sarcastic comments at people in town. Denzel. You need to take a shit. You need to take a shit right now. You got that shit in you, and we will get it out of you, but you need to let us help you. You are such a stud, Denzel. You got 200 abs and a granite dick, and you're built like a human dildo. You're the man. But if you don't accept help from us, your La Familia, if you will. I'm Latina, by the way. And that's the end of her quote. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> no, that was character building. Yeah. Who's Hank Guster? Uh, Felix, you just do okay, Hank I'll Guster. Be, I'll, I'll be Hank Guster. Uh, you are absolutely the person I would die for. You have the kindness. You, you, have, you have a kind of kindness to you that makes me want to fucking cry, dude. Sometimes I kind of just think of you and remember your mom is in a motherfucking coma. And I just tear up. You. God, man, I fucking hate it to not to. I fucking hate it <laughs> to not be you. You're basically a god to me. You are God's gangster. You are a lifeguard for humans. Fuck. Okay, now I'm BB de la Rocha here. Hank, Diesel, Kimber, all the rest. I know things are getting crazy. I have heard tale of a man who chased a bee into the grain silo and it poisoned all the grain. There was the meteor and the other things that have been discussed. But hark. Our town has come unto the troubled times. 
We need a hero, true, a hero true, who can vanquish the meteor and all the other various problems of this town, such as the car wash in which hundreds of school ch children are currently trapped, or the wizard's castle that is no longer protected by the power of Merlin's spell. Who among you will heed the call? Shall it be you, Sir Hank the True, or thee, Rolando of greatest wit, or thy, Kimber of the noble swamp? What say you? Shall these dark times meet the sweet steel of thine blade, swift and true? Okay, Branson, so your tank spits. You yeah, tank spits is about eight feet tall. He's completely hairless. Uh, if you want to get a picture of him. Denzel, me no think so good, but me think that I'll do anything for you. When I first came to the school, I often had difficulties with men confusing me and running away, causing me to say things like, which way did he go? Which way did he go? After men had perhaps run through my legs. People who tied my shoelaces together and dared me to chase them. And guess what? I would. And when that scientist made, me, made that pill for me, that made me super smart, I started to feel my relationships deteriorate with people around me. And only you were there for me. And when I got so smart that I started to see the tragic flaw in the intelligence pill that I got, that made me realize my intelligence would be bad again. It was you who drove me to the state-sponsored home to live out the rest of my days, because I was unable to deal with the thought of being pitied. It was also you who explained to me that my life was exactly the plot from Flowers for Algernon. And you were the one who promised that you would always shit no matter what was happening before I slipped into mental incompetence. But now I'm learning you broke your promise and that you aren't shitting. And you must shit. You must shit. Oh, by the way, could you put some of those flowers that aren't growing because of the meteor on Aldernon's grave after they start growing again? Unless the military base opens in two days and then wildflowers won't grow anymore? I think that's what happened. Thank you. I want you to listen. I want you to listen without any effing cobwebs in your ears or preconceived notions in your heart. If you have any. Take that as you will. I respect the military. I respect the men, the women, and everyone else who puts on the uniform to defend my wife, to mouth off, make a horse's ass out of myself, and maybe raise my kids one day. It's a goddamn sacrifice I never made, so respect to them. But where my respect ends, something else begins, and it's called giving a damn, and maybe you should try it. I want to get to the bottom of this fucking coma as much as anyone, more than anyone. Hell, probably more than you. I fell into one right as I was about to tuck into some TJ's peanut butter cups, whiskey, and how I met your mother. But I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, I said that right. I don't think it's worth it to have the exhaust fumes of high APR finance to Dodge Challengers choking my future kids with their poison exhaust. I don't think it's worth having TikToks where they flash cut themselves in famous Stars and Straps t-shirts and then have their uniforms on in the next shot. And I sure as hell know it isn't worth my future kids seeing the Clementine Claw, the Apricot A-Hole, the Tan Twat go here and talk about how huge and wonderful this new base is, how they're going to take down the meteor and the coma, showing my kids it's more acceptable to grab someone by their pussy as opposed by their empathy. So go ahead, fill the foundation, pour the concrete, and build the base. When it's all said and done, you won't be able to tear down what you've done to Coma Town. Bernie lost because he was racist. Let's <laughs> So all those characters we just heard from in that scene we'll never see again. No, never. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to go back to all the other characters you know, but that really helped to build out like the whole world of Comatown. Because mm -hmm. really, like Comatown's the main character of this series, I would say. Yeah, it's yeah. like the whole town is a character. Yeah, that's the character we're yeah, yeah. building is Comatown. So in the next scene, it's daytime. We're outside with Officer Coma as he's sitting by the town pond having a think. He is reminiscing about the intimate evening he shared with Sharon Bartender when he put his wiener inside of her P star 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 Y is how it's written in the script. Yeah, I wonder who wrote it. Yeah, I wonder who wrote that. Yes, I'll place my firearm on the ground as I think about coitus. The coitus I had last night. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> a nearby child nearby child playing with a red ball watches the morning light dance off the hand hey you kid 
You ever been in love? <laughs> um, yeah. What? Just lost okay. my spot here. Just a second. Come on. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, here we go. And Olin's the watching. Kid says, the kid says, yeah, but my girlfriend died on the playground when my ex-girlfriend killed her. My girlfriend was 23, by the way. I'm only 11. My girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend was 35, but she's in prison now. She had my baby while in prison. I don't know. I guess I missed a lot of stuff. I kind of feel like I never had the chance to be a normal kid. Never had a chance to play and live a carefree life. I have to worry about so many things. My many ex-girlfriends, my dead girlfriends, my two kids. That's right, I have two kids, not just one. I have to worry about getting a job, but sometimes, well, sometimes I just want to be free again. Free to swing on the monkey bars. Free and innocent, like a kid. Is that supposed to be drama? It just sounds like pedophilia to me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's some gun there. That reminds me of my dad. He had that kind of gun. He left, by the way. Kind of makes me wonder what type of father I'll become. What kind of man I'll be to my two children. Well, three, because another one's on the way. It makes me wonder... Will I commit the same sins my father did? Is history doomed to repeat itself? Is life this grim charade where we are doomed to repeat the same trite roles as those before us? Maybe you should just take a minute, kid. Don't worry so much about so much. You figure. My dad, he would bake us cinnamon rolls on Sunday mornings. Heh, <laughs> it's funny. I didn't like them very much then. But well, as time progresses, it makes you do funny things. I miss the smell of those cinnamon rolls a hell of a lot now. It relates to the gun because he always put his gun on the kitchen table as he cooked so that he wouldn't get any flour on his gun. But when I ate the cinnamon rolls, I stared at the gun. So now guns kind of make me subconsciously hungry. Uh, looking away from the child in the distance. Yeah, okay, kid. Whatever, kid. I'm trying to think deeply and solemn about the very idea of love, and you keep interrupting me with your weird and disgusting story. The kid stares at the gun. His pupils get bigger and bigger. Officer Coma is staring away into the horizon, lost in thought. The kid keeps licking his lips. He looks conflicted as he stares at the gun and back at Officer Coma. Close up on his eyes, he dashes towards the gun and grabs it. No, kid, what are you doing? We are doomed to repeat the sins of our fathers. No. The kid eats the gun in one clean bite. It slides down his throat in a gun-shaped shape. Kid, <laughs> kid do you, you realize what you've just done by swallowing that gun like a cartoon melon? The chamber is loaded and the safety is off. That thing's gonna blow. Coldplay fix you. Now it's the next scene. We're outside on a highway. Officer Coma, later that same day, is cruising with his partner, Goopter D. Turl. And Goopter is spelled G.U.P.T.E.R. Yeah. By the way. Uh, I, uh, I did a few different spellings of Goopter. There was, this is something we're going to wor work out at our uh, first Hollywood table read. Yeah. All right. So yeah, then the kid swallowed the dang gun and and right off. We hey, this story's gonna have to wait. Got a reckless speeder speeding on the highway. Let's get this filthy law breaking cocksucker. Dearly turns on the siren and puts on his cassette tape of the police singing the song Roxanne. Not bad. Coma and Dieterly get out of the car and go to see who was driving them. <laughs> <laughs> Great writing. <laughs> Is he? Ah, I couldn't be dead. I wish the ugly son of a bitch was dead. No, this is much worse. He's in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Coma pounds his fist on the hood of the car in anguish and anger. You know... When I lost my wife to cancer, I thought it was the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> I cursed God. I was angry. I screamed. Made best friends with an SOB named Jim Beam. 
But when it was time to go back on the force, I made that choice. When I got the cancer that only cops got, I thought it would make me work harder, stronger, and faster. After all, perps don't care about the chemo, but now we're fighting this. It used to be we were supposed to stay woke. Now we're falling asleep all the goddamn time. Sometimes I think we're in the middle of a test like God is telling us, hey, you chuckle fucks, maybe you should have shown some gratitude for your favorite things while you were awake. Maybe smell the roses, take your kids for a walk, pray to RBG. Then I realize this is happening to every damn person in this town. Grandmas, thugs, businessmen, even the pedophiles. Every single day I see people falling asleep on top of each other. Paused in the best parts of their lives. And god damn it, if I could shove an A4A1 SOP mod into the mouth of this cocksucker and pull the trigger until all I saw was red mist, I would have already atrophied my index and given the middle. But we can't. We don't have the luxury of some flesh and blood perp who we can cuff and stuff. It's something worse than that. It's something invisible that turns lovers into enemies. Friends and foes, all at the sleeping goddamn fucking bastards. This guy. This guy in the coma. This poor bastard. I don't think he gets it. He must have done something fucked up to end up fucked up like this. <laughs> and in the <laughs> and in the coma. Ah, shit. You hate to see it. Anyway, we go to find that kid with the loaded gun. Okay, we cut to Pussy Wallace waking up in his Murphy chair. He is shivering, disheveled, and greasy. He ambles over to the mirror and looks into his own eyes like he's taking a deep drag of a cigarette. And yeah, he doesn't like what he sees. He splashes some water on his... <laughs> Another day in paradise. That'd be such a cool line to say alone if I knew someone was watching me. It would make me look gruff and rough, a tortured man, cool, sexy. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Pussy Wallace ralphs into the toilet. It's that real stringy brown kind of puke that your body only makes when you make bad choices for a week straight. <laughs> Another day in... Uh, Pussy Wallace pukes again. It's mostly stomach acid because his favorite meal is pickled eggs. Uh, Pussy wipes his mouth. Another day. Uh, uh, Pussy Wallace pukes again. He is holding the toilet and he put pukes so hard that his feet <laughs> fly up into the air when he pukes. It's nasty. Pussy wipes his mouth. Another day in paradise. Ha <laughs> ha. Wow. <laughs> what a ride. You know, drinking and me go way back. I'd like to think of it as my first friend. I was a rough little teen and I had two things on my mind. I wanted to get my lips wet with whiskey and my fingers wet with the camera, the camera cuts away, cuts away. <laughs> from Pussy Wallace interrupting him. Instead, we jump to a hospital and we see James and Jeff Creaser in hospital beds next to each other. Nurses who aren't as smart as doctors and couldn't hack it in the medical schools like the doctors could are coming to help check on them. But they keep dropping stuff and looking <laughs> stupid compared to the smart and elegant doctors. See, now I wonder who wrote this one. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder who that could have been, Branson. Uh, Dr. Woman. You'd think they'd believe us by now about these comas, about this town, hell, this meteor. I'm sick of being underestimated. I've done the research. I've run every test. Someone's got to believe me. Is anyone assigned to be the nurse? I'll be the nurse. Okay. Uh, doctor, we have another coma patient coming in. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Throw them in with the others in the big coma pile. No, you don't get it. These two brothers here, James and Jeff Creaser. There's another Creaser brother. <gasps> Why are you gasping? Did you know them? No, it's just very dramatic, that's all. Okay. Okay. Shall I bring him up here with his two brothers? Yes, I think so. Instead of a bed here. Oh, and doctor? Yes. I love you, and we get paid <laughs> we get paid far too much for the work we do here. <laughs> okay, the nurse leaves. 
Dr. Woman heads to check on James and Jeff Creaser and begins examining them. Heart rate normal. Pupil dilation normal. Elbows normal. Smells okay. Pulse normal. Normal amount of blood in his body. Normal amount of yellow humors, red, black, and the other one. Just one small bird bite on the back of his head. This just plays right into my research. They told me it's impossible, but it's got to be true. These birds are biting people and putting them into comas. But how? Why do the birds hate us so? Maybe, just maybe, humans are the real birds. The nurse wheels in another person. Wust Creaser. <laughs> Thank you. Put him right here. Let me guess. Another bite from a bird on the back of his neck. Uh, yes, of course. Vitals normal. Pupil solid. Pulse normal. Patient name. West Creaser. James Creaser gasps and shrieks straight up in... Oh, he shrieks straight up in bed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, am I James? Yeah, you're James. I'm yeah, Jack. Yeah, yeah. Wust, no! <laughs> My sweet little baby brother. No, you're in a coma too. Just like me, but what... Wait. I'm cured! I'm cured! James, you're awake. Let me run some tests. The last thing I remember is that that bird, it, it, it bit me. Cut to the last scene with James and Jeff that we saw when they crashed their cars. A bird that you don't remember seeing very clearly flies and, uh, a bird you don't remember seeing clearly flies and bites them in the back of the neck while they are arguing. <laughs> I was driving to apologize to you, Wust. I blamed you for my fiance leaving me. I blamed all of you. I wanted to be close to you, even if we stopped tight talking. After Dad chased that bee into the grain silo and poisoned all the grain, I was just, I was just so mad at him for what he did to the family name. And you always stood by his side, even after I left. When my daughter Emmy got killed by that pit bull named Primetime, you reached out after everything I had done to the family. In my shame, I was, I was too proud to even respond. But wust, oh wust. I love you, and I'm sorry. It ruined my marriage. I'd be married again if it wasn't for this fucking coma. I had planned to drive to my ex-wife's house after I drove to your house, but guess what? That bird got me good, and I just wasn't able to go to my ex-wife's house to propose. We didn't have a, to forgive Dad to become closer. We just had to fucking communicate. But you do you. If you want to stay in a fucking coma, be my guest, because I'm awake. Wuss Creaser just says dot, 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 because he's in a coma. Yeah, parentheses, in a coma. <sighs> Touching his, his coma brother on the hand. Hang in there, baby bro. Coldplay fix you. Did he just say Coldplay fix you? The song title, out loud? Meaningful stare, nod, Coldplay fix you. Charles, can't hear you. Jeff Creaser shoots awake. Did someone say Coldplay fix you? Everyone joins in and laughs. The meteor <laughs> says, play it again, Sam. And everyone laughs so hard they start coughing. <laughs> now, we go to the dealership. An incredibly muscular man walks around a tiny red sports car convertible, ogling it and holding his hand to his chin in thought. Another man with disgusting, slicked-back hair and a cheap suit approaches him. Thunder Matt. Uh, see anything you like? Ha <laughs> ha, I'm not sure. Is she fast? Ha! <laughs> Is she fast, he says. Ha! <laughs> She'll be the one leaving you not being able to walk in the morning. Hands the man the keys. Come on, how about a test drive? We cut to a large man driving the sports car with Thunder in the passenger seat. So, how's she feel? <laughs> All right, motherfuckers. It's okay. <laughs> okay, as in the best piece of ass you've ever had, or? It's okay. Right, right. Say, those muscles. How much did those cost you? Were they worth it? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> what I mean is... You seem to be a man who gets what he wants. If you wanted this car, you should have it. 
You should drive it every day. If that makes sense. We finance? Do we ever? Funder Matt's phone buzzes, and as he pulls it out of his pocket and looks at it, he reads a text from Ooster Meast. Stucky's Roadhouse, 9 p.m. In- interior, Stucky's Roadhouse. Funder Matt sits in the booth enjoying a ginger ale when Ooster Meast, wearing some kind of rare bird on his head, like a raccoon hat, but it's a rare bird, comes in and sits down with him. I've been here for an hour. I've had six ginger ales. He said to meet him at nine. Or oh, something came up. <laughs> Kayla, the waitress, in a tight little piece, comes to the table because she knows Meast and means business. Two whiskeys hold the rocks, shaken, not stoyed. Yes, sir. And she salutes him as she takes his Very order. Very anime of her. Yeah. <laughs> Now, down to business. I know you, you want to know where the kid is. You know, the one, the kid that put the, swallowed the gun, the, the gun with the gun, bullet in the gun, where it, it is uh, the chamber, and you could just go, and then you could just blow it any, any minute. I know. You want to know. Well, here's the thing, Mr. Meast. I knew all this was going to happen. I, I, I could have prevented it. How do you mean... See, well, you know Lucky's Fold? Dive joint, down on the corner, on 1st and 2nd Street. Dusty spot. Well, there's a guy there. He was Pussy Wallace. And he can see the future, see? In his dreams. When he dreams, he, when he sleeps, he sleeps in his Murphy chair. He's got a Murphy toilet, too. But that's beside the point. <laughs> anyway, he told me. Little Pussy Wallace tells me about how the kid is going to swallow the gun. And I did nothing. I could have told Officer Coma. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. To <laughs> almighty, almighty shit. <sighs> this is the last thing that should have happened. But it did. Okay. Yeah. Goddamn right it did. Goddamn right. <laughs> When every single checker seemed to light up, the board got tossed from the table. And you know what? You know what? Fine. Fine. But I'm not going to sit here like a wet clown who was pickled and tossed to a pack of one-trick cats. Fuck no. Fuck no. It's not me. Hell no, actually. I'm not just some stupid excuse, stupid person who's just going to sit back and let all this go down without a peep. (laughs) (laughs) We need something for them to suck on. Be it me or a gun. Suck on. This smile of mine to suck on has been around for a long time, and now that's all changed. I am a motherfucker to you, and you know it. I know it. I am a motherfucker, period, in case you forgot that. It's too true even to swallow. And it's time to rinse some life from this place. So, so what are you going to do? What needs to be done? He takes out the phone and dials. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Ah, uh, eh, 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 huh? Yeah, look, hospital, yeah. Did you get a kid coming in today with a gun in his stomach? Hospital guy, yeah, a little bit, yeah. But that would violate HIPAA to tell you about it. No, it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't, because it's my gun, so tell me the details of my gun. Okay, uh, the kid's in room 102 East. Okay, hangs up the phone. I got your guy. Let's go. All right. There's a final scene, but we probably got to do it pretty quick. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're inside oh, the okay. hospital. Uh, Dr. Woman is tending to the kid with the gun in his stomach. Officer Dandelcoma, Officer Gupta, Deterley, Fundermat, and Oostermeest all barge in together. There you are, the gun swallower. Yeah, I didn't run away or anything. I told you I was going to go to the hospital, but you didn't listen. You just walked away mumbling about Sharon Bartender and are you going to be together forever and what's the meaning of love in the time of comas and meteors? 
Just then, Sharon Bartender comes into the room. Dandel! Oh, Dandel! I knew I'd find you here. I don't want last night to be just one night. I want it to be every night. Oh, Sharon, you remembered me. That night of passion and coitus we had was special. Officer Coma starts going down on one knee like he's going to propose, but then Dr. Woman interrupts. If we don't get this gun out of here, it's going to blow. We need to act fast. Pussy Wallace wanders into the <laughs> hospital room. <laughs> Sharon, <Why? laughs> I knew you'd be here. Why is the bar not open? I need a drink. Jeff, James, and West Creaser all walk in the door. Hey, what's all the commotion? We're out of our comas now. <laughs> It's nice to go for a walk now that we're all out of our comas because that single bird bit us all on the back of our heads. Well, the commotion is that we're taking the gun out of this kid's stomach. It's loaded with a bullet of the chamber and the safety is off. Charles. You guys just keep referring to me as some kid. Don't you want to know my name so you can call my parents or something? Am I crazy? We got to cut this kid up as soon as possible. This is going to take all of my skills as a doctor, but I am well trained from going to medical school where I majored in pediatric gun extraction and minored in advanced pediatric gun extraction. Man. <laughs> We'd like is... to let a... This is Woost. <laughs> Sorry. Ma'am. We'd like to lend a hand if possible. I just got out of a humdinger of a coma. And I'd hate to see this little guy fall into a coma if things go wrong. I'll help too. Me too. And me too. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay, Dr. so we don't need to keep going around the room. You can all help. I didn't really want to help. I'm more of a hands-off type of guy. Listen, I know what y'all think of me, right? Old pussy Wallace. I'm a real nasty, a sickie, you know? You don't think I know, you dogs? I sleep under the thinnest blanket of all time. I sleep in a Murphy chair. It's like a Murphy bed, but for a chair. I don't care. I don't care what you think of me. Because I predicted all of this happening. Nasty old pussy Wallace. He wears a jock strap as normal underwear because he likes the feeling of it. He likes the way it makes his farts feel. Yeah, yell at me, hate me, frown. Because it turns out I have legitimate psychic powers when it comes to predicting very emotionally traumatic events. Whatever. I got a riddle for you. What do you do if you're old and disgusting and hornier than you've ever been in your whole life? Give up? The answer is you go to a bar and eat pickled eggs for eight hours straight and sexually harass anyone in the room you may think have soft feet. I wish you would all hate me. I wish you would do anything but ignore me. I'm a person. I deserve acknowledgement. Come on! Dr. Woman holds up a scalpel to the kid's stomach who is still fully awake and cognizant and was not anesthetized at all. At that same moment, a bird shows up on the windowsill, which is open so all the people in the room can get some fresh air. That, th that's the bird! The bird that bit us, bit all of us Creaser brothers on the back of the head! Bird, this is the kid. Bird, you've bit your last head. This ends now. The comas, the meteors, everything. Now, bird, it is you who will have your head bit. And the kid grabs the bird from the windowsill and swallows it simply, as if it was an ordinary gun. The bird goes down the kid's neck, and in a big, it goes down in a big bird-shaped lump, then starts walking around the stomach with a vengeance on its mind. And Jeff says, the bird is going for the gun! No! 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 The bird inside no! of the kid's stomach hits the trigger of the gun. Bam! 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 The gun is shooting everyone in the room. Everyone is hurt with bullets, but Officer Coma is bleeding especially a lot. His blood is all over the place, <laughs> including the floor. <laughs> oh, fuck. I am impervious to comas. <clears throat> but I never thought bullets would be the end of me. Huh. <clears throat> How ironic. The kid is going to die. He's bleeding too much from his stomach. He needs a blood infusion immediately. Officer Coma. I can see your blood easily because it's all over the place. 
Looks like it's the right type, in fact. Looks like your blood is exactly the same genetics as the kid. <laughs> you're, you're his father! So Officer Coma just, breathes what may be his last breath. I'm just glad I got to meet me son. And I got to see him grow up to be a man. Three kids. Of his own age and a little. Sharon Bartender caresses Officer Coma's hand. Oh, Dandel! Dandel! We're going to have a future together. The white picket fence, the whole thing. What's more? I'm pregnant from last night. The kid is also dying. You mean I'm I'm going to have a brother? My three kids, they're going to have an uncle? And the meteor says, oh no, there's a bigger meteor coming. Coldplay fix you. Now the the in, incredibly emotional music plays. While the meteor, the bigger meteor, closes in on the smaller meteor. Everyone makes very emotionally poignant looks at each other. Some smile, some nod, some even offer a glimmer of a smile. But one thing is certain. Everyone is certainly growing a little bit as a person. And at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for, isn't it? End of episode. Let's we should probably ahead. get out of here. Oh, should we? Yeah, it's already all seven right. or eight, whatever. Yeah, but yeah that's, uh, that is, uh, this is me, Comatown. Yeah, so we worked me. really hard on that, guys. Uh, we will be taking constructive criticism, but... After this quarantine shit's done, we're all going to LA to sell this. Yeah, we're becoming LA guys. We deserve yeah. it. No, we've we've I again I need just need a fucking break. All right, Fine. great job, boys. Great job, uh, uh, Taylor, especially. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Taylor. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Bye bye.